YouTube. There's more information coming out about the NSA scandal just broke on The Guardian this morning. I told people there would be more information leaked. A lot of people got bored after a week and said I was wrong. I was actually right. And this is much, much deeper than just mining for metadata. Uh, this is something new called X-Keyscore. And it's a program that these NSA analysts, these low-level people who still get paid large salaries to sit on their ass and do this, it allows them to essentially go through every line of detailed information that you've ever d gone through online since their programs first started being used. Backlogged, too, even further back than that, perhaps. Uh, every email, Facebook message, every picture you've sent, everything you've posted, everything you've said on news sites, literally everything. Um, and I'm sure there are other programs as well. I'm sure that they have the ability to root your computer and basically see what you've got on your screen at any time, too. And it's very, very concerning. Uh, this is worse than the metadata by far. I mean, this is actually under the blanket warrant of a FISA court. They can go in and look through anyone's information on Earth. By the way, there are servers in basically every country that are undergoing this. Um, essentially completely negating the uh, existence of the Fourth Amendment. It's clearly unconstitutional. There's no way it's not unconstitutional. In the future, I'm sure people will look back and say, why weren't people more enraged? Because it was blatantly unconstitutional. This is just one of those things like McCarthyism or the Japanese internment camps. They happen from time to time in our country. They are unconstitutional. They are unlawful. The government just basically says to people, well, it's necessary to keep you safe, and people shut up, because people are stupid. Um, and I've pointed out this as well. I pointed it out before, and I'll point it out again. Even if you leave a, live a completely squeaky clean life, with the white picket fence and the two-car garage, and two kids and the little lap dog, and you never have done anything wrong, even, even if you have never gone online before, do you feel comfortable even if you don't care if they go through your own personal data, do you feel comfortable with them going through the data, potentially, of political candidates? What would happen if a political candidate, some person of the people who was really, really popular, ran and didn't kowtow to the corporations and the bureaucrats and the lobbyists and the special interests? Could they not look through their online records, maybe even manipulate their online records and put things in there they didn't actually do, and completely destroy their lives, or threaten them and say, well, you're going to start towing the line if you don't do what we say, then we'll destroy your life. Do you feel safe with the fact that some of these files and these lines of text may contain social security numbers, phone numbers, uh, people's banking data, all sorts of things, medical data, and of course, <laughs> medicine is now going to be overlooked by the NSA. Um, it's the world's most insane dystopian 1984-ish data uh, storage technique that you could possibly think of. Uh, this gives basically unlimited power to the NSA. You have to wonder if these programs weren't green-lighted by the politicians in the first place because the NSA had already looked through their data and threatened them if they didn't vote for it. You almost have to wonder if that's the case. This is extremely worrying. Now, of course, it only broke today, so usually it takes about a day for anything. If it's posted on The Guardian, usually the next day the mainstream news picks it up. Time will tell, basically, tomorrow will tell, whether it hits the mainstream media or kind of gets swept under the rug, because the mainstream media has done that before with some of these NSA-related stories, uh, either making use of other sensationalist bullshit news, like the Zimmerman trial, or simply not putting it up in the first place if they have the option not to do so. If it's a, you know, less than an extremely major break, sometimes they'll just hide it completely or bury it on page nine or something. Essentially, the principle is this, though. The Fourth Amendment is fairly clear about our expectation to privacy. It's fairly black and white. There's not really a lot of wiggle room in there for opinion. Clearly, these programs, including the gathering of phone metadata, are unconstitutional. That's clear. 
Again, in the future, people will look back on it and they will clearly say it was unconstitutional. We look back on the internment camps during World War II where Germans and Japanese citizens were held without reason. We say that is unconstitutional. We look back on the McCarthy era when people were followed by the FBI by dudes in black suits because they were suspected of being a commie. We say that's unconstitutional, or if not unconstitutional, at least underhanded. We look back on the past and we have this tendency to understand that the things that were done wrong before we were alive, oh, clearly those were wrong. The government should have been doing that. Shouldn't have been doing that. But we look at the present and we say, well, I don't have a problem with it. It's to keep us safe. And we look to the future and we just put our blinders on and say, nothing bad is going to happen to us. We'll be peachy keen as long as Uncle Sam is there to make sure that no terrorists are going to get us. Um, and I pointed this out earlier and had some agreement. Even the term terrorist is a loaded semi-propagandist term that we're simply applying to people who happen to be fighting us first in foreign countries and now here uh, to strip them of any uh, military legitimacy, thus negating their ability to have protection by international law. It's clearly a ploy. Uh, the only reason that that was done, I think, was the United States government realized they weren't going to be able to beat these people unless they were able to torture them and do all sorts of other terrible and illegal things to them uh, simply because they were less organized than a standard militia and they could disappear into the deserts. And now it's being done to the domestic population, of course, domestic drones, NSA spying, all sorts of cool stuff. The British are starting a great firewall just like China. And it ties into the international community. It's not, not just the United States. Britain is undergoing these radical transformations too. Their prime minister is trying to get a huge firewall put in that will block pornography, esoteric content, anything related to basically anything you can think of it's going to block. It will make Britain basically like China. I've also pointed out to people those who don't particularly like the Chinese or the Iranians or the North Koreans because they say they're a heavily surveilled, censored culture should look at the things that are happening in the United States or Britain right now, draw a comparison and see how far off we really are. We're not really that... The neighbor's cutting down a tree or some shit. We're not really that far off from what the North Koreans are doing. We've already got the secret detention centers for foreign and probably domestic combatants. We've already got that. It's called Guantanamo Bay. We've got, I'm sure that there are black ops sites still. Uh, Obama claimed that he signed an order to get rid of all these sites. You'd have to be crazy to believe that that actually took place. Of course these sites are still fully operational. They have sites where they take people and they do torture them. Every government does. And I've pointed out something else to people. It's not like this has been a quick process. Modern fascism crept into the Western world starting after September 11th, although it goes back much, much further to the start of the Cold War. It started creeping in in a way we could comprehend because we have the Internet. Around the time that Bush took power, late Clinton era, early Bush era, that's when the Internet became truly cohesive, a true community, you see the first vestiges of social media, and that's when most people started using the Internet. That's why we noticed these things. We didn't notice them before. Before, if you were chased by a couple dudes in a black sedan wearing trench coats, FBI agents, and you told anybody about it, they just assumed that you were a psychotic, that you had gone off your rocker and had paranoid schizophrenia, and they put you in the mental ward. Now, of course, we have the Internet. So now we can post videos of these things online, and leakers can put their information on social media. That's why we know about them. The ultimate thing is this, though. In the past, when these things have happened, McCarthyism, internment camps, whatever, most of the population did not care and turned a blind eye to it because they felt it was keeping them safe. The goal is to have people understand this program, much like those programs, never saved anybody. And here's the final proof. When the NSA scandal first broke, 
John Boehner came out and said, this is, has stopped at least two terrorist plots to my knowledge. Then Pelosi came out. It stopped half a dozen terrorist attacks. And then Clapper came out. It stopped about 50 terrorist attacks. And now you see in the news they're claiming it stopped 300 terrorist attacks. The number keeps magically growing. I pointed this out several weeks ago. It went from two to half a dozen or a dozen to 50. Now it's 300. These people have no clue. You know why? Because it hasn't stopped any terrorist attacks. The only application it may have had in quote-unquote stopping a terrorist attack is if the FBI played along with some wannabe terrorist and fed them fake materials convincing them that they were secret Al-Qaeda agents and gave them a fake bomb and let them try to detonate it so that they could do a sting operation. And they've done that many, many times. Anybody stupid enough to do that was never a credible terrorist to begin with. So I would like to see a running list of these supposed plots that were stopped and the details on how they were stopped and what they pertain to. I think you'd find most of them were goofy sting operations in the vein of that kid there that tried to build some bomb and blow up. I don't fucking know what the hell he was trying to blow up. But he never would have even tried it if he hadn't been approached by FBI agents in burqas and turbans, uh, trying to convince him that they were Islamic militants, had noticed him, thought he had talent, would feed him materials. It's just like the Boston bombers. Supposedly, with all this NSA stuff, we should have stopped the Boston bombers, because they were talking about it on Facebook. They were talking about it on social media and they had been investigated already by the Russians who told the FBI to look into them, who told them that at least the older brother was a militant, that he was a radical. The younger brother, he, I don't, still don't know the story with that. He might be innocent as far as I know, but the older brother, he was a crazed militant, and they never looked into it. They have all this technology. Why didn't they stop it? It's because this technology isn't being used to stop terrorism. Nobody in the government gives a shit about the tiny amount of terrorism that could possibly take place. Even before this NSA stuff, hmm, can you think of many terrorist attacks in our history? 9-11. That's one terrorist attack. That's not 20, 30, 40 terrorist attacks. They're trying to convince us they stopped 30 terrorist plots and that these plots magically never occurred before 9-11. Like that was the beginning of worldwide terrorism and there was never terrorism before and uh, we can never go back. We've got to take more and more liberty from people. That doesn't make sense. Either these militants were doing things domestically before 9-11 or they're really not planning anything. 9-11 was a one-off and most of the modern attacks that you have don't even deal with Islamic terrorism. I think by terrorist, what they really mean is anybody who's a dissident who might possibly think about rising up with a rifle because they get tired of having their head stomped by a boot forever. That's essentially what it boils down to. These are scare tactics. Just like interning people. Scare the people into not being Nazis, into not supporting the Japanese. We've got to convince them that they're all a bunch of wild animals, that they're trying to kill everybody. McCarthyism. We've got to convince people not to become communists because they're evil and terrible. And uh, we want to go kill people so that we can get more oil. So here, we'll brand these people commies, follow them around, make sure they go into a nut war. And now it's this. It's no different. It's the same thing. And it's bipartisan. It took the House and Senate. It took two presidents of different parties to put these things in place. It's bipartisan. The entire government supports it. We saw uh, resistance when we saw Amash. And now we've got the Holt Amendment going forward, which hopefully will pass, and it will get rid of the Patriot Act and curtail these FISA courts, or FISA courts, whatever the hell they're pronounced. We can hope for that, but we should be doing more. There should be more public outrage. There should be 10, 100 times more outrage about these programs. They are unconstitutional. And finally, when somebody says to you, or says to me, Oh, well, I don't have anything to hide. I don't care. I don't care if they watch me because I don't have anything to hide. Just tell them if the government didn't have anything to hide, why were they hiding these programs? 
If they're so wonderful, they do so many good things, and they're totally not being abused, why were they hidden from public view, from public scrutiny? Why did Congress hide them? Why is Clapper hiding even additional details from Congress? Even Congress got screwed. Even Congress got lied to. These are the people we elect. Congress is supposed to be the primary political force in the United States with the president primarily there to veto things Congress does wrong and sign things Congress does right and control the military. Congress is the, supposed to be the seat of power of the United States, not even the presidency. We've had a lot of imperial presidents lately. That's not originally the way it was meant to be. And yet people don't give a shit. They don't give a flying fuck because I don't have anything to hide. Uh, I, I don't have anything to hide. Never, never looking at the fact, oh, I don't know, they went to Thailand and screwed a 12-year-old tranny hooker or something, but they don't care as long as they catch some terrorists. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's not doing us any good. It wastes millions of dollars every single day, and it doesn't stop terrorism. They can claim all day that it does. It probably hasn't stopped a single terrorist attack, and we can look at the Boston bombings and say it did wonders for that terrorist attack, so it must do absolutely wonderful on other attacks.